Hello my soccer universe for a channel first. Yes, believe it or not, I am wearing an Inter jersey uh, for this one. My only Inter jersey and I don't feel very well about it. Milan fan that I am, but Inter has been doing quite well and so I don't want to send necessary love to them, but I want to send some acknowledgement for their achievements. Um, I'm beaten at the table and you know while it's tempting to start with La Liga since we're talking already into let's go to the midweek Serie A results because um, I mean I talked about Barcelona lengthy on uh, Wednesday morning so um, we can go then back to La Liga. Serie A I actually did watch three games midweek this was first at Roma Atalanta because I really wanted to watch Roma I got so psyched up I was listening to the Serie Awesome podcast got so psyched up everyone yeah we love Roma we love Roma um, and then yeah it was a weird game I mean I saw most of the first half and I saw highlights and I saw the last few 50 minutes basically right after Atalanta scored the 1-0 and I have to say Roma had chances, but they were not as exciting to watch. So Atalanta gets the 1-0 through Zapata, who then should have made it 2-0, right? Uh, but Roma also had chances to equalize and stoppage time. Atalanta makes it 2-0 um, and gets the win. Kind of uh, makes it, it was the first loss for Roma and kind of puts a, a it's like being hit by a club uh, to finish that one. So yeah, not very was not very exciting and kind of set the tone because the uh, evening game that I watched was Inter Lazio where yes Inter was the better team uh, at the beginning uh, not as dominant as in the derby you could see that the derby cost them a lot of um, um, energy but they took with the first shot on goal through D'Ambrosio they took the lead and it was basically a miscommunication between the keepers Rakosha and the defender and D'Ambrosio just uh, could not the uh, cross couldn't be picked up, by, picked up by the keeper because the defender was there and D'Ambrosio took advantage of that and then it went basically through the keeper in the, into the net as, as weirdly as it sounds and yeah, it was deserved at that point. However, what came afterwards is that Lazio had at least three, if not four, really good chances. For Lazio, uh, Immobile was not playing from from beginning because he protested against his substitution the last weekend. So uh, basically, Lazio shot themselves there in the foot because whatever Correa had, uh, had and Correa should have had a hat-trick in that game, he could not convert. Uh, on the other side, Inter also had a chance that they didn't uh, convert, but... It, to me, the game was mostly about how Lazio could not find the equalizer or even a lead that was well in there. I mean, they had a uh, beginning of the second half, I think a 5-0 advantage in corners, uh, had more shots on goal. And in this 15-minute spell between the 30 and 45, Lazio should have scored two, if not three goals. Never happened. Um, other results. Fiorentina. I Unfortunately, I didn't see the highlights, but Fiorentina is off the schneid. 2-1 win over Sampdoria. Ah, yes, I saw the highlights. They had a 2 nil lead and Sampdoria gets a goal and then uh, shaking nerves all over. Um, but they finally get their win and they are not in last place anymore. Uh, that actually will boost them up. Lecce wins at Spal 3-1. Then uh, Stonald Cagliari wins at Napoli, meaning Cagliari is enjoying a really good start to the season as well. Parma Sassuolo 1-0 and Genoa Bologna kind of um, also surprising, 0-0. And then yesterday, Torino Milan. <sighs> Horrible game. Milan gets a deserved penalty, makes it 1 0, and then has chances, especially Piontek, where there are at least two, two clear goal chances that you need to make. Uh, at, 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 uh, at the beginning of the second half, Piantek, I mean, point blank range, he has to put this in the internet, there is no excuse for that, even though he converted the penalty. Uh, but I was so tired that I just fell asleep during, during the game. And when I woke up in midnight, um, I checked the result and I, you know, expect, I mean, Milan had this pretty, pretty, pretty much in the back, they just didn't, didn't make the goals, and then I see that Torino turned this game around in five minutes through Belotti. First one, a shot... Yes, he makes some uh, nice moves, but the shot, Donnarumma has to save that. And Donnarumma um, almost gave up a goal uh, early, uh, late in the first half, right before halftime, where Belotti, if he's more with his mind, he would have rolled it in and not shot on goal. 
Um, and then the second one, uh, Belotti to Zaza, where Donnarumma can make a save, but puts it to the side to Belotti, who is now in clear clear of goal. The easy one, he cannot make, because it's blocked, but then with a bicycle kick, he puts in the net, makes it 2-1. Kessie in stoppage time, out of point-blank range, cannot put it into in, in the net, then Zaza runs on goal, free, cramps, cannot put it in the net, and then again, Piontek with a header that he has to make, cannot also make it. It's... A maddening defeat, and I could spend an entire pot, uh, an entire um, video on Milan, and probably I will. I probably wait for the, for the Fiorentina game, and then, then I will talk about Milan. Is one of those teams that are really in crisis for me. I would say Milan and Manchester United are two big name teams that are absolutely one hundred percent in crisis. Not Barcelona; those two. That's an absolute shambles. What they're in, uh, Milan. Probably even showed the best, uh, had, the, had the best display of the season, but nothing really. Uh, it, you, you didn't get anything from it and was not in any way convincing. So table we have now Inter uh, still leading, 5 out of 5 wins. Juventus just dropped uh, a, a point. Uh, Atalanta is now getting up there again. And Napoli, Cagliari, uh, Torino at 9 points. Roma... <clears throat> It has a so-and-so, so starting Bologna is also coming down a little bit. Uh, Milan you find now in 13th spot, Fiorentina moves up from last to 15th. But you know, if you look at the bottom of the table, now it's uh, Sampdoria and Spal that are in trouble and Udine is also in there. So yeah, it's kind of tight there. La Liga, we talk about Barcelona again getting a win. So. As I said, they are not really in crisis. They are they are just playing bad, and you know it might not be their year, but they will still qualify safely for Champions League. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm a little bit kicking myself. I should have watched Valencia Getafe. Valencia a three-one lead, but Getafe gets a three-three draw. So Valencia just cannot get out of it. They again make a lot of lot of lot of um, draws. Real Madrid also sooner. Vinicius Junior. Scores a 1-0 and completely breaks down after that. I guess he had been under law, a lot of pressure. But, you know, Real Madrid gets the win. 2-0. Uh, overall, it was kind of a convincing one. I think uh, they showed well. And so they are uh, they are getting on track. I mean, after the defeat in Paris, everyone was hitting uh, Real Madrid. And now they have two, big, two relatively big wins. And look to be well in the running. Watch out for Real Madrid this season. They might be a sleeper, especially in La Liga. Um, Sevilla yesterday, I mean, after losing to, to Real Madrid, where they had tons of possessions and chances, but but no real chances, um, they had an easy 2-0 uh, lead at halftime over Eibar and then shot themselves in the foot. First, Vatschlik and a defender cannot conquer communicate, which uh, enables Abar to get a goal. I think then there was a penalty given away, and then a free kick, which was well taken, but with a two-man wall. Um, stupid. I mean, this was really throwing away a safe win for Sevilla, and Sevilla suddenly finds themselves a little bit into more wavy waters. Real Sociedad with a 3-0 over Alaves uh, Storms. Also towards the top and Celta Vigo, Espanyol, you know, also two teams that are in trouble and cannot get anything going. So in the table now, Real Madrid, believe it or not, is in the lead. Atletic Club is the one dropping now. Real Sociedad is in second, Atletico Madrid in third, Atletic Club in fourth, Granada. Yes, after the win in Barcelona, they of course uh, could not back it up. Barcelona is now with 10 points and Sevilla also with 10 points. So we'll see about those uh, other name teams. Valencia is in 13th spot. Um, and on the bottom with Espanyol, Mallorca and Leganes. Uh, Alaves is also in there. Eibar also a little bit. Celta also. So gonna be interesting how that evolves. Uh, what else can we, uh, we, let's talk quick the League Cup and then we go to France. Here you have the results. We talk about that Spurs uh, lost on penalties. All the others went through with the one, um, with two exceptions. Oxford United beating West Ham 4-0. That, that for me is a true head scratcher. And then Manchester United at home to Rochdale, uh, had to go to penalties. That is also not good. They could have suffered, uh, Spurs, um, fate. At least the draw for the next round serves up some interesting ones with Chelsea, Manchester United and Liverpool, Arsenal. I think that's more like it Then there will be a little bit more interest. But that also means that we won't have in the latter stages some really, really good teams. 
And lastly, in league, uh, we had um, another remarkable result. We talk about the Tuesday games, in that PSG with a reserve uh, squad loses to Reims 2-0. I saw the highlights. There was Neymar and not much else. Nantes ran and it won nil for Nantes, which uh, again ran was up there and it has is now falling slowly. Lille Strasbourg 2 0 is another one and another notable draws is Brest Lyon 2 2. So uh, this is where France is and I have to say the standings now look quite interesting with PSG and Angers of all teams at 15 points. Then Lille and Nantes with 13 and Bordeaux Marseille with 12. So I mean the Bordeaux uh, PSG matchup uh, happening this weekend could be definitely an interesting one. Marseille and Nice are also kind of in the running. I hope that Rennes gets back. We have to see about Lyon. They started brightly and then nothing really much from there on the bottom. We have Strasbourg, Monaco, Saint-Étienne and Dijon. Well, that's my review for the week on the big five leagues. I know I, I want to do more. I just don't have the time. I could talk also about the Austrian Cup, but that probably doesn't interest too many. But maybe I should do a little bit of Austria because I'm from Austria and that might add just another um, facet and Austria is not doing that badly in uh, Europe this season. Anyway, let me know what you think about a Milan fan wearing an Inter shirt. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, Just drop a comment below, tell me what you think about all the midweek results, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.